Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are what are the differences between a digital manifold gauge set, a four-port compound manifold gauge set, and a three-port compound manifold gauge set. I get asked this question quite a bit, and it's often a newer technician asking what manifold gauge set they should use. So typically, the technicians are using the three-port manifold gauge sets and four ports in the classrooms just because they're less expensive for the schools to buy. A lot of them are public schools that are that are training our technicians, and so they're typically starting out with these. Uh, the one good thing about a compound manifold gauge set is it makes you think more. So, you know, we, we are reading pressures, right? These gauge sets are for pressure, uh, but we're always converting those to saturated temperature. So, so you really want to think about servicing HVACR equipment with temperatures and not necessarily pressures. Because all we're doing is we're getting a pressure reading and we're converting that to a saturated temperature. So on these gauge sets, we have three saturated temperatures, the green inner ring the, for R22, the pink inner ring for R410i, and this one happens to be R404a, which is the uh, orange saturated temperature ring. So the pressure on the outer ring aligns to the inner temperature ring, and that's how we determine what our saturated temperature is. Now the thing is that will be maybe one, two, three percent off of what it actually is. So, and it's also hard to read the dial versus a digital manifold gauge set. It will tell you the pressure. This one happens to be a uh, S Man 460, and this will read the pressure at the top, and then it will tell you the saturated temperature for each refrigerant that you can select through. So, for instance, you might select through and and go from R22 to R410A or 134A or, or what have you. 404A. This displays the pressure right up at the top at 0 PSIG. So you want to make sure that when you turn this on that it's not connected. So it's reading 0 PSIG is what, what it should be reading. And then over here at the suction line temperature and the liquid line temperature, that's for these clamps right here. And they should read very, very close to each other. So they should already be calibrated in 32 degree ice water to make sure that you're getting your accurate temperature readings on the tubing. So if you use a compound manifold gauge set that's non-digital, then you're still going to need a temperature reading device, and I would recommend something like this. This right here is fairly inexpensive, and it does two readings with the K-type bead temp sensors right here. This is the ST4 by field piece, and you can also calibrate the temperature readings. So you're going to take your tubing readings with a digital uh, temp reader anyway. Now in reference to a, a brand new technician, you know, some technicians want to look like they're they're very professional and qualified and, and all that, and so they'll they'll go and get one of these or or another digital manifold gauge set. I would I would recommend getting a compound manifold gauge set for a newer technician because I want to make sure that they know the superheat and subcooling and can diagnose the system properly. Basically, these are going to make you think a little bit more because you're going to see the pressures, you're going to convert that to temperature. And then you're going to take your superheat reading here and your subcooling reading over here. It's kind of like driving a stick shift car. If you can drive a stick shift car, then you can drive a, a automatic car. So if you get used to reading these, you always you can always go back and, and use one of these afterwards. But if you start off with a, a lesser expensive one of these, they're very inexpensive. You know, uh, you start with one of these and then you upgrade to a digital one after you get some a little bit more experience and this will actually tell you your superheat and subcooling readings automatically. So you don't want to take all the thinking out of the process right away when you're trying to still still learn, still, you know, you're still fresh. So you want to think through it a little bit more. So the only thing is this compound manifold gauge set does not have the accuracy that a digital one has. And that's the, the one drawback to a newer technician starting off with one of these. Now you can get digital versions of these themselves that just read the pressure and the temperature. You could also get a digital gauge set uh, that is not as sophisticated as this. It doesn't have wireless controls. It doesn't have maybe even the temperature clamps, but it does read just the pressure and the saturated temperature. Now in reference to the seasoned technician digital manifold gauge set, they are they're great. You know, for uh, for the seasoned technician now. Me personally, I don't use the micron gauge that's built in on this, and this one right here is a four-port manifold gauge set. The only reason that you'd have four ports is to run your vacuum through this manifold. So I don't, I don't like to run my vacuums, the evacuation of the moisture and nitrogen air out of the system. I don't like to do that through the gauge set. I like to do that separately. So if you're looking for a video on that, when you don't attach the 
manifold gauge set during your vacuum, I have that linked in the description below. But if you were going to do triple evacuations a lot, then a four port manifold gauge set is nice. You know, a four port is nice for specifically that because you can you can hook your your vacuum hose up here and then you can hook your nitrogen here and you can vacuum break your vacuum with nitrogen vacuum break your vacuum with nitrogen without having to move a lot of hoses around i just don't like to run the vacuum through the manifold gauge set just because it's it's more restrictions it slows the vacuum down there's more hoses more chances to leak just because of all the hoses and connection points and i like to have the vacuum gauge not on here and not on the display, but as close to the system I'm vacuuming as possible. So if you're not going to vacuum through the gauge set, and you're not really doing a lot of triple evacuations, then, then you wouldn't really need the, the four-port manifold gauge set. So this is a, a decent amount more expensive than a three-port is. If you're just checking the refrigerant charge and adding and recovering refrigerant, uh, then a three-port manifold gauge set will be a good first starter as a gauge set. Now an advanced technician can get a lot of more use out of a digital manifold gauge set. You can, uh, with this one, you can actually take remote wet bulb readings uh, and outdoor temperature readings. So this will calculate the target superheat for you. So right here is a TSH. Uh, so this one will calculate the moving target superheat at any point in time. So that's, that's extremely helpful for when you're checking a refrigerant charge in superheat. That will be used for systems that have pistons in them. And if you already know what you're looking for in reference to saturated temperatures and your superheat and subcooling and you're an advanced technician, then, then absolutely a digital manifold gauge set is, is great. The other good thing about a digital manifold gauge set is pressure testing. So when you pressure test the system, you'll be able to see up here at the pressure, you'll be able to see that move a lot faster than you would see on a dial on a compound gauge. So it's a lot more accurate for pressure testing, which means that you could do a pressure test in less time. So you can see this fall in very low increments of like 0.1 PSIG. So if you have your pressure test on for 10 or 20 minutes, you, you'll really see your pressure drop a lot with this compared to with a compound gauge set. It may look like the needle hasn't even moved. So even if you have a digital manifold gauge set like this or another version, you're still going to need a digital temp reader with K-type bead temp sensors on them just in order to take your delta T measurements across the evaporator coil. What you do is you screw a hole into the duct with a sheet metal screw and then you can put your, your, your temp sensor in and then you can take your readings there. What I find is when a new technician gets a digital manifold gauge set that does all the calculations for them and figures out superheat and subcoin for them. What happens is everything is fine when they're checking the refrigerant charges or adding refrigerant into the system, but the problem ends up being when they go to troubleshoot. So say something's just not working right like the way it should normally work, say a liquid line restriction or low airflow or, or some other issue, contaminated refrigerant, then that newer technician gets more confused when this uh, has been doing the thinking for them versus when they are doing the thinking with a compound manifold gauge set, they seem to know a little bit more of what's happening. But for the seasoned technician, a digital manifold gauge set is a great choice. The accuracy it gives you when you're checking the refrigerant charge, as well as when you're pressure testing, as well as the time it saves for checking the superheat and subcooling on systems, as well as the wireless sensors in order to figure out your target superheat. So if you're looking for any of the tools here, I have them linked down in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.